So I'm going to now uh, do the second part of these problems from chapter four, uh, kinematics in two dimensions. We did some projectile motion problems earlier, and I want to do some circular motion problems uh, now, uh, maybe two problems or so. So I want to be uh, as detailed as possible with this. I feel like we didn't spend enough time. So here's the first example. Might be simple, but uh, let's just do it more, do it carefully. So the turbine is spinning at 3,800 3, RPM. So A turbine is spinning at 3,800 RPM. PM. Remember what RPM means, revolutions per minute. Okay. That's an angular velocity. Then it says here friction um, in the bearings, in the bearings is so low that it takes 10 minutes to coast to a stop. To a stop. The question is, how many revolutions does the turbine take while stopping? Or does the turbine make? How many? How many revolutions does the turbine make while stopping? First, it's like you have a, your ceiling fan, fan in your room, you turn it off, turn the switch off, and the ceiling fan keeps spinning, but it slows down. And it slows down, it doesn't take 10 minutes, here the friction is so low that it takes 10 minutes to stop. So the question is, while it is slowing down and turning and turning and turning, how long does it, uh, how many revolutions did it make to uh, finally stop? That's the question. So let's remember, in the x-direction, if you're moving, we talk about x, the position in the x-direction. But if you're spinning, we like to talk about the angle. I remember what the angular velocity was. It was omega, and it is d theta dt, where theta is the angle, d theta dt. And the angular acceleration, which we called alpha, it was d omega dt. So the acceleration is constant. We're told that we're, we have uh, basically it's slowing down at some constant acceleration. And so we derive the following equation. Just like velocity is dx dt and the acceleration is dv dt, uh, it's the same math. And so we ended up with the following, that theta is theta initial plus the angular velocity initially times the time, plus one half of the angular acceleration times the time squared. And we have also this equation. Instead of V equal to V initial plus AT, you have omega equals to omega initial plus alpha times T. And we also have, instead of V squared minus V initial squared equals to 2A times X final minus X initial, you have omega squared minus omega initial squared equals to 2 alpha uh, theta minus theta initial. That's all. Okay. And when it starts to slow down, it hasn't made any revolution, so the angle is zero, and then it slows down and turns and turns and turns, and we would like to know what theta final is. 
We don't have the time, uh, but we do know when it stops, omega will be zero at the end because it has stopped. And we're given the initial angular velocity uh, here. We're given the initial angular uh, velocity here. Uh, actually, we do have the time. I'm sorry. We do have the time. Yeah, here's the time. It takes 10 minutes to stop. So maybe I should use this one to find the angular acceleration first. Yeah. So first of all, I know that omega initial is 3,800 RPM. 3,800 revolutions per minute. I need to change that to radians per second. So times one minute for every 60 seconds times 2 pi radians for every one revolution. So revs, revs, min, minute. So that means omega initial would be, uh, I have to find it. So we get 3,800. Uh, I'm sorry, 3,800 times 2 times pi uh, divided by 60, and that gives us 398 radians per second. That's the initial velocity. Since it stops, omega final is equal to zero. And so I know that omega is equal to omega initial plus alpha times the time. That means alpha is equal to omega minus omega initial divided by the time. And so I have uh, 0 minus 398 over the time. The time is 10 minutes. That's 600 seconds. 10 minutes is 600 seconds. So 600. So I get alpha will be what? 600. 0 0.663. 0 0.663. Six, three, and it's alpha, so it's radians per second per second, so radians per second squared, right? And we're almost uh, almost there. They didn't ask us for oh oh, uh, it should be negative, it should be negative, it should be negative. They didn't ask us for any of these, but they want theta final, so I can come here now plug in the time and alpha and so on to find theta, or I can come here, it's up to us, we have all the information. So let's just come here to this equation and find theta. So theta, after 10 minutes, would be theta initial, I'm going to take that to be, so well, let's write it down, theta initial plus omega initial times the time plus one half of alpha times the time squared. So we do that, theta initial is zero plus omega initial is what? 398. The time is 600 seconds or 10 minutes, so 600, plus one half. Alpha is 0 0.633, but it's minus 0 0.663. The time is 600, again, 10 minutes or 600 seconds squared. So what do we get for theta? Uh, so we, we, let's do that. So 398 times 600 minus one half times the acceleration, which is uh, 0.663 times 600 squared. So I get theta to be 11,000, actually 119,460 radians. That's it. Actually, they ask how many revolutions, so I would, uh, that's easy. We change ra radians to revolutions times one rev for every two pi radians. So just divide this number by two pi, so over, two, over. That's about 19,000 revolutions, 19,000 revs. We turn by 19,000 times before stopping. That's correct. I have it correct. Always good to double check. Okay.
Okay, so uh, to the last problem here uh, that I wanted to do, I just want, in the homework you have similar problems, uh, but I wanted to give you like some background, hopefully that you'll be able to do all of this. So here is another example. They say the angular velocity of a process control motor is omega. The angular velocity of something is omega equals to 20 minus, this is a half, yeah, one half. Yeah, one half of t squared. That's omega as a function of time. Now, by the way, the convention, you have something spinning, it either spins counterclockwise or clockwise. If it spins counterclockwise, it means the angle is increasing. So we take that to be the positive direction. And if it's spinning clockwise, that's the negative direction. So if it's going like this, omega is positive. If it's going like this, omega is negative. If the acceleration, if the angular acceleration is in, is in the counterclockwise direction, the angular acceleration would be positive. Otherwise, if it's in the clockwise direction, it would be negative. Okay. Uh, so, they say the time is in seconds, and then the units here are radians per second. They're just the SI units. So the question is, uh, at what time does the motor reverse direction? At what time? Like A. When does... the motor reverse direction? Through what angle does the motor turn between t equal to zero and the instant when it reverses direction? So, through what angle does the motor turn? from or between t equal to zero and uh, the time it reverses direction. Reverses direction. Okay, well let's uh, write it down. Again, if it's positive, if omega is positive, then it's going in the counterclockwise direction. If it's negative, it's going in the clockwise direction. So it starts at equal to zero, it's positive 20, because if you plug in zero here, you get that. And then at some point, this term here would win, because if t is large enough, then you have 20 minus a larger number, it would be zero. So at some point, omega is, it will be, it will, it will go this way and slows down and slows down, and then it will start spinning clockwise. So the moment it will, it will go around, uh, it will reverse directions is when omega is equal to zero. In order to go from counterclockwise to clockwise, you have to stop first. So that instant is omega equal to zero. Omega is equal to zero. And let's find the time when omega is zero. 20 minus 1 half of t squared. And so you get t squared is equal to uh, what? square root of 40, would be 40, and so t would be radical 40, and what's the square root of 40 is approximately 6.235, okay, 6.235. I would just leave it as an exact number. For part b, they say through what angle does it turn? You might be tempted to go and use kinematics. The problem is you can't do that. Because kinematics, the equations of kinematics that we found, theta final equal to theta initial plus omega initial times the time plus one half alpha t squared, that assumes that alpha, the acceleration is constant. But notice here, the acceleration is not constant. In fact, 
Notice that uh, the acceleration, let me just put a note. Notice that alpha, which is the omega dt, let's take the derivative of this. Derivative of 20 is 0. Derivative of t squared is 2t. So the t come, 2 comes down, so you just get minus t. So that's not constant. The acceleration is changing. It's not constant. So you cannot use kinematics to do that, uh, equations of kinematics to do that. Kinematics at constant acceleration. You actually have to integrate. So we're going to integrate this. So we're going to say omega is d theta dt, and then integrate that, and then get, that gives us theta. So we know that theta uh, omega is d theta dt, and so theta would be uh, integral of omega dt. And let's integrate that. So we'll get the integral of 20 is 20t, 20 and then uh, the integral of t squared would be one third of t cubed, so it would be minus 1 6, because 1 third times a half is 1 6 of t cubed, plus some constant, plus some constant. And so we're going to say, initially, when it started uh, at time t equal to zero, we're just going to start counting the angle from that. We're free to choose our reference angle. So theta at t equal to zero will be zero. Theta at t equal to zero is zero. So if you plug in t equal to zero here, you get zero minus zero is zero plus a constant. So the constant itself is zero. So we conclude that theta of t, theta at any time t, it will, it will just be 20 t minus one sixth of t cubed and the constant is zero, since the initial angle is zero. So, when you plug in t equal to radical 40, you will get, theta will be, uh, when t is equal to 40, you get 20, uh, radical 40, 20 times radical 40, uh, minus 1 6 times radical 40 to the cubic power, and, uh, uh, you will, uh, well, you, you can plug it into the calculator and you will get uh, about 84. 84 radians. 84 radians. So it will have turned by 84 radians. I think they said through what angle? Yeah, they didn't say how many revolutions. If you want to know how many turns, just divide that by 2 pi and that will give you how many uh, revolutions. Okay, so 84 radians. And sounds good. Uh, I will stop here with these examples. The next time we meet, it would be about um, uh, Newton's laws. So we're going to start chapter five, which is Newton's laws, and uh, which talk about why does this happen? Why do we have acceleration in the first place? It turns out that the answer is forces, and Newton's law tells us how to relate forces to accelerations, how they are related. And then, uh, and then the math will tell us how to make calculations. So let me pause here, and I will see you next time.